Praise the Lord from my blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. Today is the sermon uh, Celebrate Redemption. Celebrate Redemption. The last Sabbath sermon for 2019. Man, God is so good. He has brought us through this entire year. And I thank God for keeping our ministry faithful, for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The uh, only time we didn't deliver a word on the Sabbath is when we was doing ministry or outreach or had an appointment, but God has kept us faithful for another calendar year, and I'm so excited about that. I can't take any credit, any glory from just being faithful to the Holy Spirit giving me a word and me sharing and delivering a word by way of the internet. Our ministry, we come to you two times in the calendar week, once on the Sabbath, again on the Midweek Miracle. Today is our 12, 28, 2019 Sabbath word entitled celebrate redemption an awesome word to close out this calendar year of our lord and savior jesus christ and i'm so excited to be a part of what he's doing in humanity not just in this part of the vineyard but just in humanity because i never know how far these sermons go and how many people they reach but i'm excited that god has chosen me to preach his word and the gospel of jesus christ to all the world in the name of jesus let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you've done, <clears throat> everything you're doing, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that everything we've done throughout this entire year, beginning last year at our first fruits fast, all the way through the calendar year, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the things that we've done, the things that we've said, Father God, the way I've attempted to represent you, Father God, was done. Father God, by the unction of the Holy Spirit only, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, for all the souls, all the people that we've been allowed to touch and minister to this entire year, Father God. Thank you and praise you for your anointing, your power, your presence, everything you've done and doing, Lord Jesus. I look forward in the name of Jesus as we go forward and to prepare for this 2020 First Fruits Fast, Father God. The, the culmination of a decade, the ending of one and the beginning of another, Father God. Taking nothing for granted, Father God. Thanking you for your glory. We're celebrating redemption, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray this word I'm going to bring, Father God, will touch somebody right where they need to be touched, Father God. Heal somebody right where they need to be healed. Deliver somebody where they need to be delivered, in the name of Jesus Christ. A lot of words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be pleasing in your sight, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah and amen. I had to stop that prayer. I was about to start speaking in unknown tongues. <laughs> but I am so excited, you know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes we just... I mean, I, I looked at the news yesterday, and I think a 32-year-old dude who was a reporter for ESPN or something, I don't want to get the, get it wrong, passed away. He's gone on from his labors to his reward. And, um, you know, I'm not, I got seven biological kids and four grandchildren. One, one grandchild has already passed on. She uh, died uh, after only a few months of living, if I'm correct. And um, I am so grateful for this God, awesome God that we serve, awesome, awesome God. And all I can do to repay him for how awesome he is is to be faithful over the few things that he might make me ruler over many. I just thank and praise God. I thank you, the viewers, any and everybody who watched me preach. I know I'm not the best speaker. I know I'm not the, I don't get things perfect all the time. And I don't say things exactly the way they probably, you probably think I should say them, but I'm doing this with all sincerity of heart. I, I never petition anybody for monies. We don't ask anybody to do anything. I'm just preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ as the Holy Spirit gives it to me. If you ever need to get in contact with our ministry, feel free to call us at 614-847-2057 or 614-723-9770 or by way of the internet at www.teamjesususa.com. And, um, you know, I, I can't apologize if we've offended anybody because that's not our goal and that's not our motive. But in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, some people are just not going to agree with the liberty and the things that God has given us through Jesus Christ, your blood. So once again, we're speaking on a topic, celebrate redemption. So before Jesus Christ, we had no access to God as, human, as humanity. Adam and Eve messed it up for everybody. So before Jesus Christ came, all the way in Matthew, we had no access to God by way of connection. You know, God had access to humanity, obviously, but we had no access, we had no way to get to him. After Jesus Christ was born, 
lived, died, and rose, he revolutionized how we humanity come boldly to the throne of grace. So after Jesus Christ was born, he lived and he died. After that, we gain access to come boldly before the throne of grace. Galatians 3, 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And 14 goes on to say that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we're talking about celebrating redemption. The fact that we was redeemed from the curse of the law by Jesus Christ. That's an awesome, awesome, for, for those of us who understand what that means, that is so awesome. That's why we say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And then 14 says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And anytime I see in scripture where it says might, it is because it is by faith. You know what I'm saying? We don't just, get, these things don't just happen to us. They happen to those that believe. You can't receive the things of God without believing uh, what God said. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it is. You know, there's no ands in for but. You know, he that cometh to him must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we do that. This ministry, Team Jesus USA, that God gave me, Team Jesus USA Church and Team Jesus International, we diligently seek the faith of Almighty God and the person of Jesus Christ, doing his perfect will, believing everything he said that's written in the book. We're going to begin our scripture reading in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1, and we'll be exhorting as we always do. And I pray in the name of Jesus, this word finds you right where you need to find you at. Chapter 9, verse 1 in Hebrews, it says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Verse 2, For there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table, the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Verse 4, which had a golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that booted the tables of the covenant. Verse 5, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we can, cannot now speak particularly. Excuse me. Verse 6, now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heiress of the people. Verse 8, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of holy, excuse me, of all, was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Verse 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washing, carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. So there was a time of reformation that came 
that allowed the people to walk in the liberty that Jesus Christ would give them. Verse 11, but Christ being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of, his, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats, calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us all. We're speaking about celebrating redemption. There should come a time in every born again, born again believer's life where you realize and recognize that we celebrate Jesus Christ. We celebrate Jesus Christ in the past tense. We celebrate Jesus Christ in the present tense. And we celebrate Jesus Christ for the future that we're going to have in eternity with him. The scriptures say again in verse 12 of chapter 9, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He gained. That's why, you know, I don't apologize for tearing down all these false religions and all these false hopes and all these false holidays that teach and preach anything except for Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't apologize for that. Just like God instructed Jeremiah, commanded Jeremiah to tear down, build up, to root out, to destroy. He commanded him. And then he, he, after all that, he says, now build. What he was doing is preparing a way so that we would know who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come. Neither by blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Verse 13, for if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of heifers sprinkling the unclean sacrifice, sacrifice to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, whom through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? A lot of people are operating in dead works and not serving the living God. They have cre created a form of godliness. And what does that mean? I'm going to make it plain for you. They have created their own form of religion in the name of the real and true living God. But they have no power. There's no resurrection power. There's no healing power. There's no deliverance power. There's no hope and it's temporarily insane. How much more shall the blood of Christ, whom through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator, mediator excuse me, of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that we were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, Jesus died for you and me. He redeemed us. This is why we celebrate redemption. Verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So for the covenant to be made secure, he had to die. 17. For a test testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength. After all, while the tester live, basically is letting us know that Jesus died for you and me. And for him to be everything he said he was, is, and is to come, not only did he, was he born of virgin birth, lived a, a sinless and, and sinless life, he died, it became a curse for us, curse anyone who hangs from a tree, then he rose again with all power, as the scripture says. Whereupon neither the first testament 
was dedicated without blood. 19. When Moses had spoken every precept to the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and with goats and the water, scarlet wool with hyssop, hyssop, excuse me, and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Verse 20, saying, this is the blood of the, of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. 21, moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. You hear that? That's what God commanded Moses to do. So what do you think happens to us once we accept and believe with all our heart, mind, body, and soul who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come? If he was, if Moses was commanded to sprinkle the blood of the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, who are we? Who are we? We're covered by the blood of the Lamb. 22, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. No shedding of blood, no remissions of sins. This is why we celebrate redemption. Verse 23, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. 24, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. This is why we celebrate redemption. Everything that Jesus Christ did from beginning to end was for us. He didn't do it for himself. Nor 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood for others. 26. For then must we often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. 28. And finally, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We celebrate Redemption. We celebrate redemption. The Lord gave me this word based off the fact that we live in a world that will take the things of God and, and manipulate them and man will use them to make filthy lucre. And we have been called to preach Jesus in season and out of season. There's never going to be a time where we're not preaching Jesus. Never going to be a season where we're not preaching Jesus. There's never going to be a people who we're not preaching Jesus to. It's not as will that any should perish. Not one. Not one single person should perish. That's not his will. He paid an awesome and mighty price one time for humanity. But you have to repent, confess, repent, believe. And do what the scripture instructs you to do to gain eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. It, it's not meant for you to perish. It's not meant for you to live beneath the promises that God gave us by, by, through, through Jesus Christ by way of his sacrifice. When people perish and are living beneath the means that God has created for them to live by, it's because they're not doing what Jesus Christ has instructed them to do. Verse 17 in John 3 says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We see that word might again. He that, 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth, excuse me, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 19, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light 
because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Finally 21, but he that doeth truth, doeth truth, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ as we close one year and enter into another one, those that will make it, because there's no guarantee. We still have a few days left. Some people will perish and pass. But know this, no matter when you pass, it is important beyond a shadow of any and every doubt that you're celebrating redemption. Your redemption lies not. Jesus Christ died for you so that you could live. It will be a shame to miss that opportunity. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you once again for everything you've done, all the things you've said. I thank you for your word, Father God, that helps us understand why it is that we should celebrate redemption. I thank you for your anointing, your power, your presence. Thank you for everything and all the things you've done, Father God. I love you and give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, have your will and your way. Be magnified, be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray forever, ever. Hallelujah and amen. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this ser sermon finds you in good standing with our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And that if I don't see you on this side, I will definitely see you in heaven. I pray in Jesus Christ this prayer for you. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ, you can begin a relationship with Jesus Christ by confessing, repenting, confessing, repenting, and believing. You confess that you are a sinner and you need a Savior, that you're willing to repent and turn from sin. The Bible in James, I think 2.18 says that he didn't know to do good and do it not to him, it is a sin. So if you, your conscience let, allows you to know that something you're doing wrong and you know what the Bible says according to that's right and you're doing it, it's wrong. You need to repent from that and turn from that. And that you believe that Jesus Christ was born of virgin birth. He lived 33 years on this very earth. He allowed them to crucify him on a tree to become a curse for us so that we could be redeemed from the curse of the law. Then God rose him up three days later. In the name of Jesus, you can be saved. You can be stay, saved and start a walk with Jesus, reading your scripture, praying, receiving the Holy Spirit by speaking in unknown tongues. Find you a, a church or a fellowship to assemble with like-minded believers that teach and preach from the Bible. You can be saved. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Once again, if you need help, feel free to call our ministry at 614-847-2057 or by way of the internet at www.teamjesususa.com. May God bless you and have his face continually and always smile upon you. I, once again, by way of now, I almost forgot, our ministry will be offline for the entire month of January for our first Fruits Fries 2020. So the next time you'll see us preaching a Sabbath word will be in February 2020. Until then, God bless you. May heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.